Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Jack Snacks. Today we're going to talk about soloing strategies for the Grateful Dead song, Morning Dew. So before we get into talking about how to solo over Morning Dew, I think it's uh, incumbent upon me to explain the harmony that we're, we're actually going to be working with. So we're playing over these chords, D major, C major, G major for the first section, F major, maybe sometimes a little bit down. E note kind of creep in there to cause a major seven. C major, and then E minor, and then back up to D major. Okay, so if you're a deadhead, you probably recognize uh, more than a passing resemblance to another song by the dead. I know your rider, right? So the same, same chords, different duration, different groove, different tempo. But if you've got your I know your rider chops together, Chances are you're going to do pretty well when it comes time to play Morning Dew because it's slower and gives you, you know, a lot of time to develop these themes and ideas that you might be interested in. All right, if you're a first timer here or you're unfamiliar with the tune, let me break it down for you. Here, I'm going to, I got a little loop here and I'm going to play along with it and tell you the duration because we're going to start on a D major chord. Okay, C major. Starts again. Back to C, G, and then to C. Back to our D, right? Up to F. C major, E minor, to D. starts again okay so what does that mean for us as a soloist what do we get to do with that great framework right it's a great opportunity to to build melodies on top of that now the song has a great vocal melody and then there's all the time in the world to develop you know ideas that you may or may not already have in your you know your bag of tricks so let's take a let's take a quick peek at how I approach like the first section, okay? Over the D, right? A lot of my students, they'll be like, oh, there's all that D major, I know what to do. And they start up. They're good, right up into that point. And then they start to struggle with which of the C notes, do we hit a C natural or C sharp? And they're thinking, well, it's D major, so that's gonna be, right? It's a D major scale, there's D major chord, there's D major at the beginning, D major at the end, the whole thing gotta be D major. I'm gonna go with that C sharp and then, uh, sorry, wrong answer, folks. It's actually the C natural, okay? C sharp has no business in this tune with the exception of one spot, okay? And that's when we build up and we go. Other than that, and uh, you know, when you hear that, using it as a way of bending up back into the tonic. All right, certainly not a hold tone. Not something I want. I don't. I don't think D major, like the Ionian. I don't think that. No, I think D mixolydian. That's going to be the same notes as G major, right? And then over the, the C chord, what do I think? Do I do C, straight C major again, the Ionian? That F, that F has nothing to do with my song. Not yet, anyway. So if you think that this is D mixolydian, then you want to play C lydian, okay? sounds very dissonant there. That isn't the voicing that we're playing, 
but those are the scale tones that we're going to be arpeggiating, right? <laughs> basically be the same notes just we're gonna use the gravity of the C chord to anchor us on the C the E and the G tones instead of the D F sharp and A tones that we were using just one chord before All right and oddly enough G major still the parent key so we have that same old device of seeing the five and the four a whole major chords a whole step apart Mixolydian, Lydian and then major scale. So then we come to the G and we're gonna finally get to think in terms of. Now some of my students would just then start to just think, well, why don't I just play G major the whole time? Well, you can, you can, and technically you are, but I tend to think and perform better when I think about it in terms of, um, I tend to think about it and perform better when I think about it in terms of which chord I'm playing over top of. So, you know, over the D chord, what kind of D chord? Yeah, it's a D major. It's got a major third, but it's got a flattened seventh, so that makes it mixolydian. Is it a C major? Yeah, but it's a C major with a raised four and a major seven. So that makes it C Lydian. Oh, is it is it a G is it G major? Yeah, and it's just straight up G major because it's got a it's got the four in it, right? So that takes care of the first section, okay? So let's 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 play through it once or twice, okay? So over the D chord, like so, over top of the C chord, C Lydian, G major, and then back to D. section in a second. So that's really how I think about the A section, okay? D mixo, C Lydian, G major, okay? And you can you can also use just major pentatonics for all three of those chords, and you can also think just playing melody, right? Walk me out in the morning, in the morning, do my honey. Right? We're starting at the root of the D, Going to the root of the C, the third of the G, and then back to the fifth of the D. And you take it up to the third. That's over the C chord, and then... And then into the F, okay? I'll be back in a second, we can talk about the B section. So, uh, B section, we're going to start on this F chord, C, E minor, and D, okay? And all that's going to translate to chords in the key of C major, okay? But, again, just like I don't want you to think, oh, G major for the whole A section, I don't want you to think C, C major for the whole B section, because then you're just going to run up and down the C major scale, and you're not going to be grounded in the harmony, okay? 
So let's take a look at the F chord. What kind of F chord is that? Yeah, the F major. It's got a major third, right? But what do we know about its seventh? Is it a dominant chord? No. All right, and we may not be playing the major seven like, like we are in some other tunes, like, like in eyes, the way we really hammer home the E major seven with that. Right, we're not doing that. But if we were gonna play an E, we would not be playing any flat, we would be playing any natural, okay? So that's why when we play that F sharp, uh, that F, we can let that E major run, uh, that E run through and form a major seven. And that acts like a nice leading tone into the C chord, which then goes into the E minor. So having that E kind of continue through those, those three chords is a really nice, nice little inside tip there. All right, so the F chord is gonna be a major seven with a flat five, and that means <coughs> Lydian, folks. So that's the same fingerings that we were using relative to the C chord, the number two chord in the A progression, just brought up a fourth, okay? Or you can think of it like G mixolydian, or you could think of it like D Dorian fingerings, okay? So. We're going to be looking for resolution over that F chord on its major, the main chord tones, the F, the C, and the A. So don't, if you're going to play a line that you know works over G mixo or D Dorian, don't look to resolve it in the way you used to. Don't look to resolve a D Dorian line to a D note over an F chord and expect for it to sound very resolved. It's going to sound like you're implying the sixth. There's nothing wrong about that, but it's not the most correct answer. That's the way I look at it, okay? So um, if we look at arpeggios, we're gonna have some really nice options, okay, over that F chord. We can also think about it in terms of what kind of sound is, is Lydian. Lydian is the sound of terrapin. That, oh, sorry, <laughs> not that. Right? sound is Lydian, okay? Or the Here Comes My Girl by Tom Petty is, a, is another good one to get in your mind. Uh, right, those tunes, that's a good like benchmark. That's what Lydian sounds like. So when you hear that sound, okay, that's the Lydian tone. So we're looking at F with a flat five. So the way I approach the F chord is from major seven up to tonic, flat five up to five, Sharp four or flat five. I, sharp four is a more technically correct way of looking at Lydian, I suppose. Up to its fifth, and then major. That's going to be a natural six, major seven, and then. Okay, and then if we take that same idea. Up, we end up with what I call the pyramid. Okay, so the one note on there, that's the F note. It's a wide shape at the bottom that we were just using here, but we bring it up. So we form this little triangle and then widen the base. And the same idea, but we have a different shape here. Okay, so that's how I think about the F Lydian sound, okay? Or you can just think F major, like... And never think about playing anything other than one, threes, and fives. So... C major chord, okay, which is going to be again all stemming from the same parent scale of C major, right? So we're really starting this progression on that F and going to C, but it's all C major, right? All right, but I tend to arpeggiate the C, okay, and then we have an E minor chord. Now, the E minor chord is the one that gives most people the problems. 
it's not like an E minor chord that if we were, let's say, vamping over an E minor jam, right? We might develop using an F sharp um, tone. I don't like using F sharp or an F natural here. I, strict, I strictly try. I mean, occasionally my fingers will go back to habits, old habits of wailing over E minor and using F sharp. Yeah, sure, man, that's the ninth, right? But uh, the flat two or the nine don't really sound so great in my opinion. I tend to avoid anything like F or F sharp related at all. Um, I'll slide up out of F sharp into G, and I'll slide down from E into uh, F into E over that E minor chord. You know, I don't want to. I want to try to you know, land on that nine. Okay, it sounds weak. It sounds. Sounds, it sounds off. Okay, let's let's just hear it. Okay, so starting on D. Just so do yourself a favor, explore, experiment, and determine for yourself. But what little guitar wisdom I have, I'm going to try to pass on. I tend to avoid any F or any F sharp during that E minor chord, okay? Think just E minor pentatonic or G major pentatonic, okay? Straight E minor seven arpeggios, no nines, nothing like that. And definitely not a, f I mean, I don't know. You can get the F in there. Okay. So those are my main avoid tones here is this B flat over the F chord. Ugh, don't want anything to do with that over any part of the B section. And over top of the E chord, I tend to avoid anything with an F or an F sharp in it. Those lines, eh. everything else. You're good to go, man, all right? So C major the whole time. Now, the only other thing I do is over one section, I'll add a particularly egregious amount, an excessive amount of chromaticism and blue tones, okay? So I'll show you where that comes, right? So again. <laughs> some of those high speed that kind of thing okay so we're going to start that run i'll show it to you it's kind of the pseudo chromatic trick that garcia likes to do is connecting the dots between scale and chord tones with a chromatic passing tone okay so we're going to start out on the flat seven that's the c up, way up top here okay so that's going to be the 19th the uh, 20th fret sorry on my guitar and so it's a c b a and we're going to come to the flat three, come up into the major third of the D chord, that F sharp, and then come to A. Okay. And I'm doing two down 
strokes usually to get to that rather than going and coming back down and under and doing that move. Okay, so once I hit that, I'm doing this sort of pseudo chromatic thing. So chromatically between these and this, and so on the B, G, D. And I come here, loop back a fret. Okay. when things really get kind of cooking, right? I'm not I'm not all worked up right now, man, but Okay, so Shredosaurus, okay, that I'll, that I'll turn into when I play this, okay? So there's all those, uh, those kind of building licks work out nicely. You just have to find a little way of transitioning into the F, right? So if you're... A, section okay last section of the tune that's where everybody's going bonkers and over top of this F to C E minor to D and then we stay on D forever okay so over the top of that Garcia's soloing right and then ultimately it kind of turns into this uh, One pro tip. Okay, obviously you're just gonna get your hand moving as fast as you can. I tend to think of it as, as two triplets. trick I'll try to share with you here is don't do it where I was just doing it. Do it just a little bit further up if you can, right? The main thing that stops most people is the pick. We've got a point on the end of a, our pick and it likes to go down into the string and then, you know, it's really hard to go back and forth without it getting stuck in there and making it sound something less than smooth. By using the fingerboard of the guitar to prevent your pick from going deeper into the plane of the strings, you get a lot better results. This is very hard to maintain because it's easy enough to dip your pick in too far and then you get, and then you get, uh, you get all stuck up in there. So, no bueno. The other trick you can do, make sure that 
you, you, if you tip your hand, rotate your hand forward a little bit so that more of the leading edge, that's this part of the pick is going in at, you know, kind of tilt the angle and rotate forward a little bit. So going in rather than flat, okay, going like this, perpendicular to the string versus going like that. Okay, so rock your th thumb up a little bit. Okay, over the fingerboard. And then last but not least, if you must, you can rotate to the rounder side of the pick. All right, and those three things together. Okay. Can definitely form a smoother tremolo. Now granted, you lose some of the punch when you rotate to the round, but you rarely will get caught up in the strings that way. All right, it's like a mandolin style pick is, is rounded like that. And they do a lot of tremolo work. So that, these are a couple of tips to how to get through that tremolo section alive. I gotta say, I find it very challenging. Uh, it is definitely tougher than it should be for just playing some chord shapes and letting your hand go berserk. Um, so kudos to JG for getting it together on that. He's awesome on this track, especially the, the landmark performances that I clock um, are the Europe 72 take and obviously the Cornell one. So both of those are just, just real tearjerker moments and having seen him do it live a couple of times, Man, it was really, really something. So I hope that, uh, you know, I, I've helped you kind of understand how, at least how I come uh, come at this tune. It's not the most complicated song, but, but still plenty of students of mine uh, kind of clam on it pretty heavily. All right, so those are the sections, and I, I hope that you've enjoyed yourself and uh, the time spent together. All right, if you did, please subscribe, share, and like these lessons with your friends. Deadheads around the world are coming together to enjoy this beautiful music, even though, you know, Jerry's been gone for quite a while. All right, it's an amazing thing. So I, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope you'll check back soon for more lessons and content here on Jack Snacks. All right, signing off from Brooklyn, New York, this is Jack Devine. Take care.